Just yesterday, I saw a 20-year-old sprinter jog the opening half of a 200-meter race and then turn on the jets and drop a world-class field to a sub-20 second clocking. This should be illegal. In the history of 200 meter races, I can't remember an athlete who did something quite like this. But given that this was the new superstar Litsile Tebojo, a race of this magnitude should really come as no surprise. With this 19.94 second clocking, Tebojo is now ranked as the fastest man in the world right now in the 200 for 2024, and he's still the only person in the world to drop a sub 20 second clocking this season. We knew that this man was fast, but if you would have told me what his first three races of 2024 would look like, I would not have believed you that it would be three number one performances in the world in three different events. Now, we have seen hybrid sprinters surface in the past with amazing talents from the 100 up to the 400 meters, but nobody has quite implemented their skills with such fluidity, such effortlessness, and such dominance as Letsile Tebojo. Back in 2017, we saw Wade Van Niekerk from South Africa take his third global title over the 400 meters, running a time of 43.98 seconds for this 400 meter final, yet another gold medal to this man's collection to cement himself as one of the all-time greats. However, if we take a look at these full results, we can see that despite his inexperience in this very event, Tebojo's new personal record would have earned him the silver medal in this final. What's even more ridiculous is that if we look over to the 200 meters, we can see that Tebojo would have actually earned the gold medal in the World Championships ahead of Van Niekerk in second and Ramil Guliev from Turkey, who placed first in 20.09. In virtually every previous installment of the World Track and Field Championships, Tebojo's 200 and 400 meter double would have placed him in the top three, earning some color of medal on the podium. And with this kind of amazing sprinting to kick off the year, it got me thinking, just how good is Tebojo right now, and how does he stack up against many of the all-time greats? If we take a closer look at this chart here, which compares 100, 200, and 400 meter times, we can see that combined together, Tebojo is already ranked in the top 10 all-time, only behind some of the all-time greats to ever compete in sprinting. Now this list is a little bit skewed, as Bolt never really trained for the Open 400, Tebojo is still very young, and many other times are still yet to be achieved by other active sprinters. This is still a very impressive statistical placement, no matter which way you look at this. However, what can we see if we replaced this 400 meter time with 300 meter performances? Well, then we would get this. This chart right here places Tebojo only behind the great Usain Bolt in the 100, 200, and 300 meter distances. And combined together, he takes down historically fast sprinters, such as Michael Johnson and Wade Van Niekerk. This kind of combined sprinting from a 20-year-old athlete honestly has never happened before. And the remarkable thing is, he's achieved two of these recent personal records for his 2024 season openers. Right now, Tebojo is absolutely shattering expectations on what we thought was possible in sprinting. And as this year's Olympic season unfolds, we are approaching absolute insanity as the games do arrive. But the crazy thing is, it really does seem as though he's barely even trying right now. In his recent 400, he jogged through the tape. In the 200 meters, he opened his first half quite casually. And it was only in the 300 meters where it did appear as though he genuinely put a solid effort into this finish. And this resulted in a new world record. With so much talent, so much hype, and so much untapped potential still to be realized in various sprinting categories, can anyone realistically challenge this young man in 2024? Well, the answer is yes, because we do need to remember the 2023 triple champion, Noah Lyles, because even though Tebojo is rapidly improving right now, Lyles still remains as the 200 meter king. Since his final race in 2021, where Noah went on to win the Prefontaine Classic in 19.52 seconds, he has not lost a single 200 meter race, not one, from his unbreakable 2022 season to that year's World Championships, resulting in a new American record, to his undefeated 2023 season, this man has been absolutely untouchable in every single race where he's competed. However, with his recent exploits, many are calling for Tebojo to be the one true challenger to Noah Lyles. But can he actually do it? Can he dethrone the king of the half lap right now? With 2024 unfolding, we are officially getting a taste of what's to come. And in the 200 meters specifically, Tebojo and Lyles are preparing in drastically different ways. 
For Lyles, he has showcased massive improvements over the shorting sprinting disciplines, such as the 60 meters, dropping his PR down to an impressive clocking of 6.43, a world-class time no matter which way you look at it. And for Tobojo, he hasn't run anything shorter than 200 meters for the opening stages of 2024. For Lyles, his recent successes in the 100 and the 200 in 2023 came as a pretty direct result of his improvements over the opening 60 meters. And given this logic, 2024 really could result in some historically fast times from Lyles. But the same thing can be said about Tobojo, whose strength right now is pushing historic levels. Remember our recent 100, 200, and 300 meter comparison? Well, here's how Noah Lyles would currently stack up on this chart. As you can see, he's quite the distance behind these athletes on this list, but this is a little bit of underreporting because Lyles' 300 meter best comes from all the way back in 2017 when he actually broke the previous indoor world record at just 19 years of age. Now, I've recently talked with Lyles about this very 300 meter distance, and he firmly believes he can run not only faster than 31.87 indoors, he believes he can challenge the indoor world record, which currently stands with Steven Gardner at 31.56. You think you could beat Gardner's 31.56? Oh, 100%. 100%. Or 5. Yeah, 5.6. Yeah, okay. 100%. We got it. Easily. I did that. We'll take it in a non Olympic year. I then. did that. In my first year of being professional. That's true. That was 2018, right? No weight training. <laughs> horrible block starts. I was a skinny, wearing two sizes in my spikes too big. Now, I'm not exactly sure how fast Lyles could reach over the 300 meter distance, but if he were to run in this race outdoors, I'm calling somewhere close to 31 seconds. I really do believe he is in that shape. And if he were to put more emphasis on strength training, it is very possible he could go under 31 seconds by a significant margin. This kind of result would place Lyles directly next to Tobojo for the 1, 2, and 3 combined, and still slightly behind Bolt in these three events. This gives us a very interesting peek behind the curtain as far as overall sprinting fitness goes, but the question of 200 meter supremacy still remains. In our most recent video on Tobojo, we asked all of you how fast you believed he will run in 2024, and while some of you got a little carried away with your predictions, calling a world record by more than two tenths of a second, most of you actually selected times that were pretty realistic, somewhere between 19.30 and 19.5. Given that he has already run 19.50, running slightly faster this season does seem very possible. But don't forget, Lyles has continued to prove his class over the half lap distance for the previous five or six years. So you can never count out this legend over the 200 meter distance. Now I want to hear from all of you. What do you think about Noah Lyles clashing with Let's Sile Tobojo in 2024? Do you think Lyles still has the edge over the half lap distance? Do you think he can close in on his American record of 19.31? Or do you think a world record could go down, potentially from one of these two athletes right now? Leave your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, until next time.